July 30. It is 1.30 a.m. on the East Coast here in South Carolina. I am pretty tired, so I'm hoping to go through this information quickly. This is a fire video, but I want to start with this, which was sent to me by a subscriber. And much of the information that you will see was sent to me by a subscriber, so I want to thank all of you. Um, in just the last two weeks, dozens of children in Iowa have vanished. Uh, a young college student disappeared. She went out jogging and disappeared. And that was on July 18. She vanished. And then 48 people went missing afterwards, after she went missing, in just two weeks. 34 of those people are children. So, and <laughs> this is detailed, this article, same day that that college student went missing. Two minors were also reported missing. 16 years of age, both. Two, well, one Mackenzie, that could be a girl or a boy. And the other one, David Horn, Mackenzie Lip. I'm not going to go read all of the names, but the next two days, another eight children were reported missing. The ages 15, 13, 17, 14. July 24, five children went missing. 17, 14, 15, 16. Six people were reported missing in Iowa on July 26. All of them minors. God, we have an awful lot going on in our country. And an awful lot of people are hurting. So I want to bring your attention to a comment that I just received from a subscriber. Marie Jones. And I should have called it up before uh, doing this. Her father is stuck on a road in Mendocino in a trailer. All right, I've got to pause you. Here it is. My dad is stuck in his trailer at 5330 Lakeshore Boulevard. Please pray for protection. So I just wanted to put that out there and please pray and I hope to God that nothing happens. Patty, if you are listening to this video, I heard that mandatory evacuations were ordered for an area in which I think you live in so could you leave a comment below this video letting us know that you are okay I believe you live in Lakeport and mandatory evacuations were ordered so um, I also received this from a subscriber a link to let me see if I can get here. Just hours after I heard about the car fires, this mini series popped up for me to watch. Predictive programming at its best. Okay. The series is from 2002 and it's called Superfire. You can't make these things up. The main points that come up are in part one. It's based in California. There has been a long period of drought, excessively fast burning fire tornadoes, explosive, can jump 10 kilometers over water. And then in part two, 
at super fire temperatures, wooden houses burn even faster than trees. Um, and the at the introduction to uh, this part two, I guess, 52 minutes into it, it talks about setting off a bomb so that the explosion, you bomb the fire so that the explosion sucks out all the oxygen, then the fire goes out, it creates its own weather and rains. Well, <laughs> this fire is creating its own weather and then it rains? Wow, okay. The final nail in the coffin, so to speak, is the imagery at the end, quite apt for what we're seeing. A single green tree sprout against a backdrop of charred remains. So I'll link below if you want to check these movies out, this, this mini-series on a super fire in California, in California. And it seems the details match an awful lot of the fires that we have been witnessing in California. Certainly the car fire, but an awful lot of these fires are moving at great speeds. Now something is up with my computer tonight, so if you can just bear with my computer. Um, I will link below to everything. This is the statewide incident fire map, and there are, I, I saw a mainstream media article, there are 300 wildfires in California. No. Um, here on the active incident map, we have 27 more active incidents. So you will, if you click on these, all right, so I will bring you to, um, well, the car fire. And if you click on the incident report, it will bring you to the latest update on what is taking place. So it's 17% contained. It has burned 95,368 acres. It has destroyed 874 structures and damaged 175. And I was sent this link by a subscriber. <clears throat> and this is from Action News Now. 657 residential structures have been destroyed in just the car fire. So if you want to know about the mandatory evacuations and the locations of shelter and evacuation centers, road closures, click on this link. Um, so clicking on, I don't understand why I just suddenly have problems, like out of the blue. Uh, let me bring you to the Mendocino fires if I can find them. Crestline fire, we've got the corner fire, we've got a whale back fire which has burned 9,300 acres. It is 6% contained and I read the areas of evacuation last night this is the Roxy fire. It's 90% contained. Uh, Susanville um, is, that's 10 miles west of Susanville. Sorry. So, um, the river fire, Mendocino Complex. 
It has burned 14,200 acres and it's 5% contained. And here is all of the information. This was updated at 7 p.m. last night and it is threatening 10,200 structures. It has already destroyed six residences. It's 10% contained. It's burned 30,500 acres. Now this is the Lake Napa and Mendocino. God, I can't even keep any of this straight. But what I really wanted to bring your attention to is the mandatory evacuations that are taking place. And again, Patty, please leave us a comment. I had a subscriber ask about you tonight. And these mandatory evacuations were set in place, I guess, uh, a couple of hours after I posted my last video. So let us know that you're okay. I looked for the 5330, um, was it Lakeshore Road, where Marie Jones's father is stuck in a trailer, and I couldn't find it. But this also lets you know what the road closures are and all of the areas that are evacuated. Wow, we have so much going on and it's really... Alright, I want to bring your attention to some tweets that were sent to me. If you want to donate to the victims of the car fire, please consider donating to Tri-Counties Bank. 100% of the proceeds go to the victims. This is a locally based bank and it is a huge part of the community. So I received this from a subscriber who lives about uh, 60, 70 miles away from Reading. She knows this community so I will ask her now, um, does she know that 100% of the proceeds go to the victims? Because many people are really having uh, a lot of questions about these donations and where are they going. And we saw, certainly it was Harvey, my God, they raised so much money. You know, all of those presidents got out and did the fundraisers for the Harvey uh, victims. And then we had all the celebrities and taking in millions and millions and millions. Oprah, Winfrey, Cher, all of them. And none of the victims saw any of the money. Do not donate to Red Cross. So, you know, if we can get verification from people in the area, that would really be very, very helpful. The more verification we can get from people in the area, it would the, the more, the better. Um, and I wanted to let you know that Shasta Mall has tents set up in the parking lot with free food and water for evacuees. So people are out there and people are working together and people are volunteering, volunteering to do, you know, whatever it takes. And I also received um, uh, I, I, you know, I, I'm not going to click on that because it's going to bring uh, my Gmail and I'm sorry I just don't want to post publicly it's other people's information too but you know articles about all of the dogs and cats and 
and animals and people taking in horses and large animals, shelters opening up for dogs and cats. I saw a video that broke my heart um, that it's, well, I guess I'll end with this. I mean, people are really hurting. And while I have seen, you know, the pictures of the baby deer being saved, a kitten saved by a firefighter, and then another, I believe, firefighter found a golden retriever that had burns on his back, but he was able to find the owners of the dog. You know, when you lose everything and you love your animals, wow, it's a heartbreak when you don't know what happened to them because these fires come on so suddenly that people are rushing to evacuate. I drove up before my mom and dad. This is what I saw. Their house collapsed. And but our biggest concern is my dad got help um, and the door was left open and our dog got loose. Um, it's a black medium sized dog, a uh, pug and English bulldog mix. Uh, she's 15 years old and that is our biggest concern that we find her with everything we've ever owned. <laughs> the pictures, everything, every, everything. They were yelling at him to go. That's all I knew. And he was going to each room trying to find the dog. And then they said the dog had got out and they wouldn't let him stay. They just kept saying go, go, go. And I don't know how many minutes after he left the house that it went up in flames, but he said he could see the fire as he was leaving. So I'm just glad he made it out. I'm afraid some people may not have. All right. Um, well, it's Actually, I did want to show you this. You know, fires just leaping over you know, plants. And right here, these fires are targeting homes, okay? Look, the entire home is destroyed. It's not destroyed by a wildfire. You can see the trees in the back. And, and these, you know, um, um, oh Jesus, my brain is not working tonight. But these are the kind of trees that go up quickly. So we're hearing how dry it is, the drought. Here we have another garbage bin um, all of the trees are fine. The grass is fine. The house next door is fine. Just the home. So I really hope that people begin to use their common sense. And what you are looking at, just this picture alone, it begs questions. Please, please, Stop just listening to your authority figures tell you what is going on. Use your own common sense. The, quest the questions that are begged just from this picture, it should lead you to research. It should lead you to question these fires. And Think about smart meters, think about directed energy weapons being used.
But when we see these homes just going up, you know, and it's just an isolated home, all of the vegetation around it, untouched, plastic garbage bin, not even melting. Smart meters. That's my guess. I, look, there are so many different weapons that they have. So we can't definitively say because we don't know. And I do want to say now, the last video that I posted, and I was showing the picture of the trailer, the flat tire. I, look, I, I grew up in, like, the cement city, New York. I then moved to New England and lived in, you know, which was, like, New England suburbia. Um, and... What I'm hearing from other people who have lived in areas like this, yes, you know, a car can spark um, a fire, a flat tire may spark a fire. I don't know. The picture I showed you, I said that look at the road and then look at all of the dirt on the other side. That apparently was a turnoff. And I was told by a subscriber who knows that area, they said, there's really, it's just road. And then you have those turnoffs so that cars can stop. That's where you saw the trailer. So I apologize for what, I don't know that area. I see this dirt. Well, it was not on the road all the way you know, up the mountain or wherever it was. So, yeah, I'm guilty of my presumptions, but I will come out and say I'm guilty. Um, and that subscriber did say the fire, that, that, you know, who knows? Flat tire, you get a spark, you get these dry conditions, it starts a fire, and then, well, you know that saying, never let a good opportunity go to waste? What I'm saying to you is that we're fed lies all the time. But we can't say definitively what happened. You know, we can say that tire, that flat tire, did not cause the fire, but we don't really know. We don't really know. What we do know is whether the fire started as a deliberate action or an accidental, uh, something accidentally happened these fires are not normal. That's what we do know. And it is not global warming. And I'm getting people leaving me comments. Boy, <clears throat> I don't know what's going on, but I'm kind of getting hit lately, which I don't understand. But I got these comments from the global warmers, the believers in global warming, the believers in the lie, the lying, uh, the... the acceptors of the lie, you know, 97 percent of scientists claim that global warming is happening. All right, um, I'm too tired to even go on, and frankly after six years of doing this, and so many people, you know, coming on, uh, not just my channel, but all over the place. They watch the videos and they flat out deny everything that you're saying without doing any research. 
you know, that that is that that shows that they have this brain, this mind that has been thoroughly indoctrinated in ignorance, <laughs> in the lie. That's all. That, that's all they reveal. Their ignorance, their acceptance of a lie. But when they watch videos, and it, it, you know who whoever is posting the video, a, a, a healthy mind, a sound mind, a responsible, mature person would say, "Oh, okay. Well, let me look into it." Why, why do we have a majority of Americans who never say to themselves, let me look into it? Oh my God. All right. Um, I just want to remind you again please pray for Marie Jones's father. And Patty, please drop a comment below. Let us know.